Welcome to this wonderful annual event, the 2016 Whitehead Colloquium. My name is Tom Ashbrook, and it's a pleasure and honor to be here again at Whitehead. Um, for those of you who have I've not met, uh, I serve as host of NPR's On Point, a uh, radio show carried nationwide and broadcast here, from here, out of Boston at 90.9 WBUR Boston. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, it is a real pleasure and joy to have you with us today to share the newest research and unique offerings of the Whitehead Institute. As I've been told, you are the extended family of Whitehead Institute. Many among you are longtime supporters of this extraordinary place. I expect that one or more of the topics you will hear discussed may capture your imaginations and you, even if you're very familiar with Whitehead. I want to run through our program today. Our keynote this morning will be del delivered by Director David Page, who will share his latest work on the differences between health and disease in males and females. That is very interesting. I'll be paying close attention. The keynote will be followed by an introduction to the Whitehead Fellows Program and the opportunity to hear from two of our current fellows, Sebastian Lurido and Sylvia Ruskin. After the fellows presentation, we'll take a, have a 15 minute break, uh, stretch, get some coffee, and then you'll have the chance to explore with our panel the research to medicine ecosystem with Whitehead founding member Bob Weinberg, who's here, Immune Excite founders Ifat Rubin Bejarano and Yaniv Bejarano, and Mike Bonney, former CEO of Cubist Pharmaceuticals and current board member of Whitehead Institute. As great as this lineup is, uh, I hope that all of you will play an active part today. We want to welcome throughout all of the proceedings today your questions, your thoughts during our time together. We'll be collecting them at the sidelines here. There are baskets of index cards and pencils at the end of each row of seats. If you have a question, please write it down and hand your card to a staff member, and we will ask as many questions as possible of our presenters at the end of their presentations. Following this morning program, uh, a seated, we'll have a seated lunch with dessert and coffee and more conversation in the cafe at the front of the building. So, for those who are new to Whitehead, let me give a brief overview. Whitehead Institute is an extraordinary place to do science, a place where the world's most ambitious and curious scientific minds have the freedom to ask and answer the most important questions in biology. Some questions that already have and others that undoubtedly will change the future of human health. Whitehead Institute was the brainchild of Jack Whitehead. Jack, pictured here, um, with founding director David Baltimore, was an inventor by trade and by nature who wanted to create a new model for life sciences research. The founding vision was bold, the experiment was grand, a mass of peerless concentration of scientific talent under one roof and catalyze it with the resources and freedom to blaze new trails. The results have been profound. Countless breakthroughs have transformed our fundamental understandings of biology and disease. But the full measure of Whitehead Institute's impact extends beyond discovery. Whitehead laboratories make seminal discoveries in neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, all cancers, reproductive health, immunology, malaria, and stem cells, they shape new generations of scientific leaders, and Whitehead scientists create vital intellectual capital in the form of companies, technologies, and strategies for leading public and private scientific institutions. Today, Whitehead, today's Whitehead laboratories are led by 17 distinguished scientists who do their research here, have their offices here, and are also MIT faculty members. Four fellows, a special group of young investigators who come to us right after graduate school and are given the opportunity to bypass the postdoctoral phase and immediately create independent research agendas, and over 300 trainees who come to us as undergraduates, graduate students, MDs, and postdoctoral fellows, these scientists are quite literally doing the research that will change the way that diseases are treated for you, your friends, your parents, our children, our grandchildren. Of Whitehead's faculty members, three have been awarded the National Medal of Science, bestowed by the President of the United States. It's our nation's highest scientific honor. Five are Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigators. Eleven are members of the National Academy of Sciences. These are ratios without equal in the scientific community. This is a list of some of the public and private companies that were founded with the help of Whitehead faculty and Whitehead discoveries. I want to look at just a few of the therapies that have their roots in fundamental research conducted at Whitehead Institute Labs. Herceptin, 
for breast cancer, Bob Weinberg. Gleevec for leukemia, George Daly. Epogen for anemia, Harvey Lodish. Tafamidis for familial amyloid polyneuropathy, Susan Lindquist. And Linz, uh, Linzess for IBS, Jerry Fink. That's a big list. Whitehead is continuing its legacy of discovery and innovation as exemplified by its current members and fellows whom you will learn more about today. We're going to hear a lot today about scientific research and talk about how it goes to the point of application. As I stand here, I can't help think personally as well um, of how this all comes down to very, very personal impacts. As human beings, we have this fantastic luxury of understanding our universe, doing our best to understand it. How much or little we understand at this point, we don't know, but we are creatures who can do it. That, as far as I know, is unique in the universe, and that's pretty cool. This is one of the places that pushes that leading edge of insight. But this isn't just about understanding more. It's almost two years now since my uh, beloved wife died of cancer. The impact of the disease to understand. Am I on? I just lost an hour. I think you can hear me anyway. The impact goes beyond our very grand and wonderful search to understand the universe. It's very personal. It's very personal. We are all actors in this universe. And in some sense, each of us has infinite worth. And if you think of your loved ones, and you think of your colleagues who you most value, what they bring to life, my wife, what she brought to this world as a dean at MIT, and everything beyond, these are incredibly personal and deeply important fibers that stretch out from the research that's done here. We cannot afford to lose family members and colleagues, and scientists, and leaders, and everyday citizens who have invested in each other and in this world. The research done here ultimately goes to saving people, our family, our friends, and people who will be very important for the present and future of this world. It comes down to very personal stories. I feel that very direct in myself as I stand here today. <laughs> 